Folks, a lot is changing when it comes to higher education and online learning. And there are more options now than ever when it comes to developing skills and earning credentials. MBA programs happen to be one of those areas most ripe for innovation given the high costs we tend to associate with this degree. So nowadays, there are options out there that are far better priced and delivered in a way that's far more flexible and fits better with your lifestyle. They either come in the form of a formal degree earning MBA program or alternatives like the Power MBA coming in at just $1,000. In this video, I'll give you an overview of the Power MBA program and what makes it different from traditional MBA programs and whether or not I think it's worth pursuing. So stay tuned. Hey folks, Richard Walls here helping you with career development and personal finance. And if those topics are of interest to you, do consider subscribing down below and hit the notification bell so you get notified of when I post new content. And of course, while you're down there, if you like this video, do of course make sure to hit that like button. It helps out my channel quite a bit. So with that said, let's get to it. The Power MBA has been around for just three years, but the value proposition here is that they can deliver a high quality business education all online. It's very flexible. You can consume the content in 15 minute chunks and the what you learn is all current business practices. It's a modern way of learning. It's material that they purport to be Modern, and they also bring in a lot of executives from companies today, more so newer startups or mid-sized companies, to essentially teach a number of lessons. And that I would say is probably one of the biggest selling points is that they do bring in a lot of executives from different companies, different industries, so you get a lot of good representation across the board. And one of the arguments that they bring forward is that it's preferable maybe more effective to learn from someone that has practiced this in the real world, either currently or very recently, versus someone that's simply been teaching for decades. And there's some, there's some, there's certainly some merit to that, and I wouldn't discount that at all, but that's one of the value propositions that they, that they communicate. At the end of this program, you get a certificate. You don't actually get an MBA degree. Um, this program is not accredited like a traditional MBA program. So that's something to be aware of. So there's a little bit to unpack. So I'm going to take you to my screen. I'll share here in just a moment and walk you through some of what I see on the website, their manifesto, what they believe as far as the educational model and what they can deliver, walk you through the curriculum and then walk you through some of the executives that they say are involved with this program and would be teaching the courses. So let, let's get over to that right now. Okay, so here we're at my computer and this is the website. And I actually went ahead and went to the uh, manifesto page. This is what we believe in, founded in 2017. And I'm gonna go through some of these points. You can read the top on your own, but some of these points here I wanted to go through and address. I'm currently in a uh, MBA program, a formal traditional MBA program online. I'm at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, so I'm curious as to what these points are going to be. So for starters, top business education doesn't need to be expensive. I totally agree. I think this is a major pain point when it comes to higher education in general, but especially MBAs, often six figures worth of debt that a student has to go into to earn one, but that is a a major challenge, a major pain point. And I think what's happening now with some of the online offerings, that is be, that, that is allowing schools to attract more talent, more students, as opposed to only being restricted to an on-campus experience. It's more scalable that way when you do it online. And so you've got a lot of entrants coming into the market. Uh, formal MBA degree programs, like the one I'm in, like Boston University, there's many others that are in the online MBA space, and some of them are quite a bit less expensive, which is one of the big reasons I'm doing mine is that the price point was attractive um, and affordable. So in this case, I agree, top business education 
Um, I guess I should say shouldn't be expensive. Second point here is education needs to be flexible and convenient. Also agree. I think again with the online models, they are flexible. They are more convenient than taking off from work for two years to attend a full-time program and even part-time programs. Although it allows you to continue working, it's not very it's flexible in that sense, but it's not flexible because you have to continue working and you are having to go to school. You don't have a lot of free time. You have to go somewhere physically to attend these part-time programs or executive MBAs. So online is another 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 win for, for online programs. Number three, you should be learning from those who have been there and done that. I also agree for the most part on this one. Um, it's always helpful. I mean, that's why, for example, I tend to seek out a lot of information, a lot of interviews with executives and CEOs of major companies to see how they think and how they rationalize certain problems that their companies have faced in the past. So uh, I think that's a, I think that's certainly a good point. And going into this a little bit further though, there are plenty of professors in MBA programs that have real world experience. So uh, I wouldn't say that's true of a lot of professors or a lot of uh, schools. Uh, there's certainly plenty out there that only have only taught, um, but nonetheless, education needs to be efficient. Is it really necessary to spend hundreds of hours in a classroom? Um, yeah, that's an odd thing to say. Yeah, it should be efficient. <laughs> um, I think there's some rationalization that can be done with programs. Sometimes there is a little bit of of busy work, but for the most part, it's again, any good program, it's going to be valuable work. It's going to be work that you want to sink your teeth into and apply what you've learned. So it's not, it's not doing work for the sake of doing work. These are practical applications. You apply what you learn into a lot of cases that you read. Education needs to be up to date. Of course, um, business world has changed in the last 10 years, more than the previous 40. That, that is true. Is everything you study in your in your degree or MBA still applicable today? Here's the thing. Yes, it's changed a lot in the last 10 years. MBA programs are generally do a good job. I mean, good programs do a good job with staying current with business trends or business practices. Um, but for example, big data or data analytics, that is a very, that is a transformational idea and topic for that matter never before in the times that mbas have been around uh, or that business has been around we've never had access to as much data as we have today about our our own company our consumers our customers rather we have so much information from which to make decisions that that should be instrumental in any MBA program. And I think you're seeing a lot more of that, especially when it comes to the specializations or the concentrations that MBA programs offer. And even they even find their way into core curriculum, right? It's not, of course, you need to learn accounting to some degree, finance, economics, management. There's a lot of topics that are core to the MBA experience, but a lot of that curriculum doesn't just stay in the past, it does get updated. So I think this is, uh, of course I agree with the statement, but a lot of MBAs are keeping up. So business education does not need to be regulated. A special certification doesn't always mean quality. An accreditation or certification doesn't mean that it's a quality program. That being said, it's hard to imagine any program out there that's just a complete scam that is accredited. I think when it comes to accreditations, which this program does not have, that's, I think, one of the points we're trying to make is that, well, we don't want to do that. We don't want to fit the mold of what an accrediting body requires of us to be uh, an educational program or an MBA program because we want to do our own thing. Um, I don't know how much I, I buy that exactly. I think it's helpful to be, um, I think regulations in some sense are helpful. Accreditations are helpful. Doesn't mean, I don't, I don't see that being a restriction though. You can still teach your core curriculum 
as one would find an NBA program and still put your own spin on it. So, and then lastly, knowing how to put theory into practice is what sets you apart. Of course, this is insinuating that, I don't know, I assume this is insinuating that traditional NBA programs don't do this, but uh, they certainly do. We do case studies based on what actually happened with certain companies and we read about the case, we see the context and we apply the learnings that were, were taught in class and we apply it obviously. And then in, in an online program, you are continuing to work or in a part-time or executive MBA, you're continuing to work. And so everything that you learn, you have the luxury or the fortune of putting that into practice the next day if the situation calls for it. And I've done that myself. There's th certain things I've learned that I applied the next day on the job. And it just so happens that the job called for that specific piece of knowledge. So that was pretty convenient. And a lot of people report the same. So um, of course, put theory into practice. So now let's go to, um, and I, I agree with most of these principles, but I, I just don't know how aware the team is that developed this Power MBA is with other MBA programs and how much they've adapted and evolved over time. I think, of course, the, the pricing piece is still something to be improved upon. And so let's go to the curriculum so here you go with the power of MBA or with the power of MBA, you'll understand today's digital world better than an MBA graduate. I don't think so necessarily. <laughs> Get a 360 degree view of business and management practices. Okay. Discover the most innovative business models across all industries. And my computer is, it sounds like it's a jet taking off from a runway. I don't know why it does that. I think, I've got a really bad um, heat sink in there. It's not really great. <laughs> so again, curriculum, let's go into this really quick. Business model analysis, engines of growth, power platform segmentation. A lot of this stuff you can, it's a lot of the stuff you can find for, for free or for really low cost. If you go to Coursera, if you read the more modern or the more recently released uh, business books, you'll find a lot of this content in there, um, especially when it comes to lean startup, Eric Reese, he wrote a book a number of years back on the lean startup, which is a great methodology and it's a fairly common practice these days that you have a an MVP, a minimum viable product, and they talk you through that. The alternative here is you can just buy the book, which I don't know how much it is now, 15, 20 bucks. So that's an option. Strategy and business fundamentals, blue ocean strategy, industry analysis, corporate growth strategy, market basics. Again, nothing too revolutionary. You can Google this blue ocean strategy. Um, none of this is all that revolutionary. It's pretty standard stuff. Um, power selling, uh, digital marketing. Digital marketing is a big one. That's important. And any good MBA program today incorporates digital marketing in their either marketing core curriculum or they have a separate specialization to go into digital marketing. And in a lot of cases, that is a separate specialization because it is such an in-depth topic that you can really pack a lot of content in that. Entrepreneurship, again, depending on what your goals are, this may or may not be that applicable to you. And uh, even if it's not applicable to you, if you're wanting to get into a major corporation or if you work at a major corporation, it's still helpful to understand what, at least some of the principles when it comes to entrepreneurship, because you can be in your company, what they call an intrapreneur, which means you're taking a lot of these entrepreneurial practices and you're deploying that or applying that where you work, because there are some pockets of many of these large companies that are more innovative um, by nature, the business requires them to be more innovative because they're entering a new field or developing a new technology. So this is helpful. Uh, leadership, very typical MBA stuff. So that's nothing different. Same with talent or organization, uh, finance and accounting, disruptive tech in business, artificial intelligence, big data blockchain. So, so what I mentioned earlier about big data, uh, that makes an appearance here, but uh, again, what you'll find with many other traditional MBA programs is they have specializations here. All in the curriculum seems fine, covers just about everything I would imagine um, an MBA program would cover. But here is 
what I find the most interesting and most compelling is that you do learn from folks that have been in, in the industry, have applied these and practiced everything that they're supposedly teaching here or you know involved with this Power MB program. Uh, Eric Rees, the author of Lean Startup. Again, you can go buy the book and find out what he's gonna say. It's likely not gonna be that different. So a few notable names in here, YouTube, of course, uh, Rent the Runway, Netflix. I, I did see an interview with this guy, Mark Randolph, that I thought was really fantastic. I'm going to, if I remember, to put the link of that video, there's another YouTuber that did an interview with him that I thought was really fascinating. He's a really good person to, to watch. Um, Airbnb, I'm familiar with, Sugarfina, I've, I've seen the logo, I'm not too familiar, honestly. I'm, that's, I'm not the target market for that. Waze, familiar, Girl Boss, I'm familiar. Cirque du Soleil, that's an interesting one, given the challenges this year. And uh, Tesla, of course, although Martin, he hasn't, hasn't been involved with Tesla since the very early days when Elon Musk took over and he was, I think, ousted. Um, Whole Foods. Shazam. Okay, so there's some there's a good amount of names in here. And then a lot of these I'm honestly not all that familiar with. Hyperloop I'm familiar with. But all these appear to be startups uh, or, or newer companies. So, which is interesting if you want to go through the, the more entrepreneurial route with this. You know, I think there's a lot of good business practices, good key takeaways you can learn from all of these folks. And, but if you're going into a major corporation, this will only take you so far. I think what this is missing um, quite a bit is that there's no one in here from a legacy company. And what I mean by that is companies that have been around for 30, 40, 50, you know, years and more. And so not to sound like a boomer here, but I think there's a lot of lessons that a company that has been around for that length of time learns. There's so many lessons, either successes or failures. For them to be around that long is a major achievement. And for them to be a certain size, it's a major achievement. And you don't get there by accident. You don't get there by not adapting. There's many companies that don't adapt and eventually fail. But Again, the point I'm trying to get across here is that you only see half the picture here. You, you hear about the, the startup and the business models, how they disrupted their industries and all that stuff, but you don't have the other perspective. And again, depending on your goals, if you're going the more entrepreneurial route, this is great. This is all fantastic content. If you wanna work for a major company, um, this is still good content. It's just not gonna be the, the full story. So all that's to say is there's nothing wrong with learning from newer companies. In fact, I would say it's quite necessary, but I would say it's no more or no less necessary than learning from more established legacy companies. So we covered a good portion of the program. And one thing I didn't go into a lot of detail was the networking. One of the things that they mentioned here is that they do facilitate networking with folks that are also in the same program. I don't know to what extent, that really happens in a meaningful way. Um, but there is that, if you can look into that a little bit more. I personally haven't found a whole lot. And there's not a lot of independent reviews on this. So I, I don't know, again, from, from a networking standpoint, how much value you're gonna get there. So with all that said, do I think this program is worth it? Worth the $1,000? So one of the target audiences here from at least some of the some of what I've seen, some of the language that they use, they're actually targeting also corporations which take or at least give their employees a or the ability rather to go and pursue this program and, and learn whatever it is that this program has to offer and presumably they subsidize it. So the employee doesn't have to pay anything for it, which in that case, do I think it's valuable for them? Heck yeah, obviously. They don't have to pay anything and they I'm sure there is really great content here. But for anyone else, it's not something that I see as a really great value today. And that could change in the future as more MBA alternatives become more accepted by major corporations, which this mentions that 
you know, Google and, you know, a handful of other companies and HR departments do recognize this, but I think it's again, more from the perspective of they recognize this program as a way to educate their current workforce. It's not like you getting this certificate will get you a leg up in the hiring process. So, so it's not going to open up any doors for you for any midsize or large company, maybe for, maybe for a smaller company or a startup, which a lot of this seems to be a little bit more focused on that I can see to be of some benefit. And in all fairness, when you go to the FAQ, the program mentions that you don't get an MBA and that this is not meant to replace an MBA degree. And they themselves say that there's still plenty of value in an MBA. So in their defense, they do call that out. However, for a thousand dollars, you're getting a lot of content you can find in some form or fashion online either for free or for very low cost especially if you go to edx.org or coursera.org or udemy there's a lot of resources out there and if you look at some of the some of the folks that are on this list some of the executives you can likely go and go on youtube and find interviews with these executives and get an idea of how they think and how they run their operations. You might not get the same exact content you find in this program, but that's okay. What I'm getting at is you can find a lot of this information in some form or fashion online already. So really what you're paying for is the organization and the delivery of this content. And for a thousand bucks, I at this point in time, I'd be hesitant to recommend this to anyone unless you just happen to have a thousand dollars lying around and you don't really know what else to do with it. But there's not a lot out there in terms of reviews and anyone that's taken this program, I haven't seen anything on, at least not in any meaningful way, or at least not enough on either Reddit or Quora, I've looked there as well. There doesn't seem to be a lot of proof points. So that also another reason that gives me a little bit of, of pause in recommending this. Folks, hope this overview helped and let me know what you think of the program in the comments down below. And even better, if you've actually gone through this program, I would love to hear what your experience has been as I'm sure my audience would love to hear that as well. So do make sure to leave a comment down below and let me know what that was like. So with that said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you around.